Hey there, this is Jonathan, and in the following tutorial, we're going to take a look at different ways to use offset paths in Illustrator. Now, this came from a question from one of my students recently, and I thought I might demonstrate a couple different methods. Um, so, the first thing that we need to do is draw a few different boxes. I'm going to draw three because, whoops, I know that that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to need three different ones to start off with. Now, I'm duplicating these just by dragging and pressing down the Alt key and the Shift key as I drag. So let's take a look at the first method, and I'll use this one over here. Now, um, in the first one, if I want to use the uh, the typical effect that people look for, it's called Effect, it's under Path, and we use Offset Path. Now, I can preview this as I do it, and you'll see that it shows me that that line is going to move out a little bit, and I could change these numbers if I needed to. But if I click OK, then you'll see if I click off of the object, what I get is just the path that is the original object, then it's been offset out to that certain amount. Now, this can be good at times, but I'd really like to have that box in the center stay. So I'm going to undo that with Control Z, and this time I'm going to copy it and then do Control B to paste into the back. Now, you can also go to Edit, Paste in Back. Um, or shift control V. Oh, that's paste in place. There it is, control B. So it's been pasted into the back. Now I'm going to go to offset path and apply the same settings as before. Now you'll see that I have that path now moved to the back. Now another thing about this particular object is that you do have to be aware that it's still kind of virtual. The, uh, the offset is kind of applied virtually. So your selection when you're moving it, you know, only shows the inside part. So really what you need to do is then ex uh, expand the appearance of that box so that you actually have that real object on the outside. That way when you make your selection, of course, you get the outside um, fully selected. So the question is, can we do this in a simpler way? Well, we certainly can. On this object right here, I'm going to go to the Object menu path and go to offset path here. Now if I do preview, you'll see the same thing. Um, and it looks pretty much the same as the other one, but as soon as I click OK, you'll notice the difference. What it does is actually make a copy of the original path and move it, offset it, you know, by the amount that you've chosen, and puts it behind, which is really nice. So it does what we just did here by offsetting it and expanding it all in one go. Now, occasionally, you want to be able to have a little bit more control, or maybe even less control, um, meaning that you don't have separate objects. You really just want all this to be in one object that has these different paths in it. So it's kind of something you can apply to a bunch of different objects really easily, like maybe you want it to be set up as a graphic style. So here's where we get into the appearance panel and some of the really cool things that you can do here. Now, one of the things that is not always um, known by people is that you can make copies of your strokes and fills and have multiple strokes and fills on any object. So I can do this easily just by adding another or duplicating the existing selection. And now let me demonstrate this just by changing this color to something a little bit brighter right now. Let me try and get a color in here. I guess I don't have any other swatches, so it doesn't want to give me that ability really easily. Let me see if I can update the color here. There we go. Now it's applying it the way I want it. So on this one, I'm going to make that one a little bit bigger so you can see it is behind that other stroke. So definitely you can see that that stroke is now pushed behind that object or, or behind the stroke that's there. Now that stroke is still on top of the fill, which is a really important thing. I've never actually tried to see, but yeah, I can totally put that stroke on the outside of the fill. So that stroke is actually behind the fill, which is really, really awesome. Now I can just change the width of that stroke to whatever I want to uh, make it appear that I've got that box. Now what if I really wanted to have it have that black stroke on the outside as well. Now, of course, we could just duplicate this again and change the stroke. So if I duplicate that again 
and I make this one black back here, then I can just make that a little bit bigger, and you'll see I've got that stroke on the outside. Now, that's a pretty easy way for me to make a pretty complex box, but you'll see, you'll notice that the selection, once again, is only on the inside, and if I wanted to um, make this, you know, so it, I it could create all the objects, I would have to go to Object, Expand, Appearance, or actually, on this one, I think I even have to do Expand. Yep, I'd have to use Expand. You can see it has a lot of things now on the inside there, too. So that can be a little bit complicated, obviously, but the styles can be really cool. So you do need to undo, if you did anything like that, you need to undo so that you can see these appearance um, items in here again. Because what we're going to do is say, hey, why don't we turn this thing into a graphic style? Once you're, you've got all those styles in that appearance, you'll see that I can just drag it over into graphic styles. So the cool thing about it is that I can make another object like this and just apply that style very easily. So that's one of the reasons that I love graphic styles and using the appearance panel to create like offset paths and things because it's just really flexible. And then of course you can always expand this. So I expand the appearance and then I expand the object. Um, by the way, you can skip this and go straight to, um, ra not rasterize, flatten transparency. And this actually, I think, is a really great way of doing it, too. Um, for some reason, though, yeah, see, it's not working on that one. So I'm going to, I guess, have to use expand. It's just the way it goes. There's just a lot of other objects in here that obviously, you know, I'd want to do some cleanup, so I just have the elements that I need. So, you know, it's not awesome doing it that way. But here's another way that I can do this. So if I go back to having one of these boxes, one last time, we're going to look at one other way to create an offset path. So um, you might remember that the first way that we did it was actually using a true offset path. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to duplicate this stroke, and then I'm going to go up to my effect, offset path, and apply that offset path. Now that offset path is actually applied to the stroke that we currently had selected. So that's really pretty cool. Now I can also duplicate my fill, and I'm going to put that fill, let's see, there, and I'm going to make my fill color be a different color. So let's do... Um, new swatch, and we'll do pink. Ooh, that's not my favorite color. We'll do a purple color. All right, so let's see. I need to make sure that I have the right thing. So let's make this one be purple on the outside. Ah, it's probably not going to do that. Ah, and I know what it is. I'd have to apply this offset path, too. So that's what I'll do. I'll duplicate it and drag the offset path into the purple. There we go. Now I've got that white color fill, and I'm going to take this one and drag it up to above the other fill. Then I need this stroke to be behind the other stroke. I know this looks complicated, but it's just about arranging my layers the right way. That one goes here. The one with the offset goes down at the bottom, really. Well, let's see. It should probably go above the fill. So there we go. I got it arranged the right way this time. So now, the benefit of this one is that now I can do all sorts of stuff because I can change this fill color very easily to whatever I might want. Um, and I can change my strokes. And it gives me a little bit more flexibility than this particular one. Now, you know, they all have different benefits because look at this. You can do a really cool, like, stroked pattern in here. Um, make it five pixels, five point. I mean, that's pretty darn cool what you can do. Um, so I just love, you know, the flexibility that you get with using the appearance um, panel. Now, of course, this other one, since it's based upon using offset path, and fills, I'm not going to have the ability to give it this kind of hatch marking in there. But, you know, it's just another way to do it. 
um, but this time um, I just wanted to point out that that offset path does go into your appearance and you can turn it on and off um, anytime that you like which I think is really powerful and uh, you know you should definitely spend some time looking at how to use the appearance menu a little bit better so thank you very much and let me know if you have any questions